he's gonna moan at me, he's gonna walk away. I need to get this intro done. <laughs> Hi guys! So, uh, I need to get back on track with this channel because I've been neglecting it, I know. This is meant to be my art, uh, craft, DIY, making things channel and I'm not really making anything and I apologise for that because I have actually been making things uh, most of the time, I'm just not filming me doing it. I've been making a lot of clothing lately, sweatshirts, uh, um, jerseys and trousers, <laughs> just anything really. And I do actually have labels now so I'm going to be making clothing to sell, which is pretty cool. Okay, I have been making some jewellery, I made, I made this bangle, oh no that's my eyeball, I made this bangle. And then I made this, this necklace. I've got logo labels. These are double sided. So these will basically go, um, they can be sticking out the side or they can like that kind of thing on different products. I have some care labels. So this one is for 100% cotton, which will be my jerseys got ones for sweatshirts which will be 50% cotton, 50% acrylic and then I've got 100% polyester if I make something out of polyester. <laughs> I have plans to make a bench for the garden. I've got a sleeper in the garage which has been there for the past two years I think with the aim of me making a bench but I never got around to it. So I bought some steel legs and some steel back supports and I'm going to make a bench for the garden and then a cover to uh, a cover for a foam cushion to be on the seat so you don't get a numb bum. This is my junk, <laughs> watching The Simpsons. The plan is to make a t-shirt from my t-shirt. So I really like oversized t-shirts and I also like off the shoulder but I can't seem to get an oversized t-shirt that goes off the shoulder. So uh, <laughs> I'm having to make one. This is the t-shirt that I bleach dyed a while ago, this is in another video. If I remember I'll uh, add a card up here of how I did this. I used ice cubes and bleach. Got paper, ruler, scissors, all of those good things. I'm going to go through the whole process. So from making the pattern, cutting the fabric, hoping it works because I'm going to be doing this all in one go because I, <laughs> I don't know actually whether it's going to look nice. I've got the fabric though. Uh, I'm going to dye it. I want to tie dye fabric that's 100% cotton and then I've got some black dye so I'll scrunch it up, put some elastic bands around and tie dye it to try and get this stone wash acid look. <laughs> if it works, I don't know. Don't know. It's a lot of don't knows. So making a pattern from a t-shirt. This isn't, this isn't really a tutorial because I'm not very good at doing tutorials. Um, I just don't think I'm very good at explaining and organising a video into do this, 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 this. I, I plan to work that out eventually. So yeah, it's not really a tutorial. If you can follow this as a tutorial then good on you. But uh, I will basically go over the steps that I'm trying to do <laughs> and uh, explain them as best as I can and hopefully it will make sense. This is based on my experiences and make there's probably people that have done this professionally um, a lot more than me that I might say differently but for me the easiest way is inside out because then you can get the seam sticking out. I always make my patterns with the seam allowance included because I, I know that I'm going to come to the point where I'm cutting my fabric out and I'll forget to add the seam allowance and then it will be too small. So I always include it in the pattern. Fold it in half and then line the seams up. So I'll put that up against the nice straight edge that I've just cut on my paper. Uh, I'm not worrying about the sleeves to start with because I'll cut those separately. So once you get past the curve of the armhole, the sides are just straight down. And the bottom, I, think, I would say it's just a 90 degree. I don't actually know, but that's what I'm going to do anyway. It'll be fine. <laughs> this is how I've got it laid out. The fold of the fabric on the straight edge of my paper. I'll make a mark where the neck hole starts and where it ends. And then I will adjust it um, once I've moved this out of the way. And I'll go along the shoulder, around the curve of the sleeve, and then the slight curve under the armhole, 
and then a straight down here, 90 degree straight line here, and then that will be the start of the back piece. <laughs> and then the only difference for the front piece is that the neckline will be slightly lower, so it comes down much lower here. Eventually one day I would like to have a sewing room that has a table where I could actually do this on, rather than sitting on the floor. But I don't even have room on my desk to do this. The desk isn't ideal because it's reclaimed wood, so these, the, uh, there's gaps and it's bumpy and lumpy. And it's, but it's also currently got a sewing machine, an overlocker and a cover stitch on there, so I can not I can barely even pack orders on my desk currently. You can't see what I'm doing, I'm really bad at this, I'm sorry. So this bit here. I need a top down camera as well, so if I had a camera up there looking down then that would be good. And then just roughing out this straight line at the top on the shoulder. And then where it goes to out here. It's moving. So to there and then and then I can use a straight edge to do the shoulder. I'm currently gonna fill it in completely up to the original lines and then I'll make adjustments after that. This you could use a French curve, which I do have. But that would require me getting up and putting it out of an envelope. So I'm just gonna eyeball it a nice curve <laughs> for the shot, the um, armhole so under the arm. Uh, tops in general are pretty straightforward. Trousers, on the other hand, and shorts can get a bit more complicated. I'm gonna add in, I think, two inches. I don't want the neck hole to be massive. But I want it to be off the shoulder. If I go too small, then it's just not gonna. It's just gonna be a wide neck, and it's not gonna go off the shoulder. But if I go too far, it might just be really, really saggy. <laughs> I'm gonna go two inches. This might not actually be the right way to enlarge a neck hole. It probably isn't. There's probably some very technical, clever way of doing this, and uh, and I'm just not doing it. I've made a pattern completely from scratch using my measurements and it turned out great. Uh, I was following a tutorial because I've never done it before so that helps. And I'm just going to write fold down here and then stretch an arrow to indicate the direction the stretch will go so when you're using stretch fabric you obviously want it to go this way so I've just indicated that on there. You also should put a grain line um, as well going up the fabric because you want the grain to go that way. But, and then also this is the back piece. And you see that this is one of the reasons why I don't film this because I can't put the Simpsons on. I can't put that on in the background because it would just sound really messy. <laughs> I've put the back pattern underneath and I can see it through because the paper's so thin and I can copy everything up to the neckline straight onto this piece of paper. I want to go up to the same point that I adjust to on the back pattern. But the difference is it's going to dip down much lower. I'll fold it the other way so that the front neckline is exposed. So I just marked where that neck comes down to mimic that curve. And I can cut this out. Now I will save you watching me do that and then I'll, um, I'll watch a tiny bit of the Simpsons before I come back and continue with this monstrosity. It's a slightly blue toned grey. Um, it's really nice cotton, 100% really soft. On a completely unrelated note, I am house hunting at last. Well, no actually, I've been house hunting for the past three, four years, I think. Um, just sort of casually, but I've actually spoken to a mortgage advisor at last and should hopefully this month get a mortgage in principle so that I can finally buy a house. I need my accountant to give the, the um, info for the previous few uh, two years self-employment 
to the mortgage advisor so that he can give me my mortgage and principal and then I can actually start looking at properties and I cannot wait, I'm so excited. Um, you probably can guess that the aspect of a property that is top of my list is a large garden. And by large garden I mean um, upwards of an acre of land <laughs> because I want, I want space for him to exercise. Currently we use, uh, we rent a field which we have to pay by the hour um, for him to have sole use of because I love that, that we don't have to worry about any dogs that might be aggressive or anything like that. Um, but it does get quite expensive when I'm having to um, pay out about £36 a week or more just to rent this field. Depends on how many days we go up there, how many hours we go up there. If it's just me and him, then it'll be about £36 for three days but if he sees his best friend then that's an extra two hours so it's 12 pound an hour so that's 24 pound more on top of that 36 so it gets quite costly um ideally i want my own land um a large garden would be nice but it's not enough land for him to fully exercise on so if i can get a property with an acre two acres be even better then yeah then we're set and then might even be puppy time it'd be fun to finally go and actually look at the houses in person and see what we need I obviously need a garage workshop for my jewelry and my pottery I need an office I'd like a sewing room because I'm obviously getting into this quite a lot and having my desk taken up by sewing machines is not convenient. It helps if you iron your fabric before you start, but I don't like to iron. If I can get away with it, I will avoid it. I want to make makeup bags, which are, there's some listed on my website, I have to iron there. Because you have to put on some interfacing to give it some stiffness. This is my bin over here. That's where all my uh, scraps go until I've finished, and then it goes in the bin. I'm going to the fabric down and do the front pattern piece. My battery is so low. And I don't have a spare battery for this camera, which I need to get really, but it's, it's charged in camera, so I don't actually know if I can get a battery charger, external battery charger, which I have all my other cameras. I just don't know if that one uh, has one. The um, Sony ZV-1, if anyone knows. I forgot to do the pattern for the sleeve. <laughs> so I'm, I'm back with the paper. So the armhole on the body is sort of a, um, a curve in and then a sort of straight line up. But on the actual sleeve, it has a slightly different shape, sort of an S curve. That's what I'm seeing here anyway. Uh, I don't know why that is. I've had to change camera because I need to start recording again and I've only just put that on charge. So I can't adjust the camera angle on this one because it's so heavy uh, the tripod will just collapse. So this is what this is what we've got right now is this angle. I've got my front piece cut out. I've done the sleeves to make sure that the sleeves fit. I basically took a tape measure on the pattern piece and just walked it around the armhole that I'd already cut out. Took a measurement and then on the fold of this I did the same thing to make sure that it would be the same size. I like to use these pegs. So the first thing I'm going to attach is the shoulders. This fabric doesn't have a wrong side or a right side. Most fabrics will have a wrong and a right and you'll easily be able to see it but this is exactly the same front and back so it doesn't really matter which sides I line up. <laughs> if you don't have an overlocker you can attach stretchy fabrics with a zigzag stitch. It needs to be zigzag otherwise as soon as the fabric is stretched it will snap the, the threads. So yeah, first seam to attach 
is the two at the shoulder, so these pieces. I always like to test the tension when I start a new project because sometimes I have to adjust um, and then um, if I don't adjust it the steam might be really loose or puckered. This is an overlock stitch and the tension is really bad. <laughs> it's really really bad. I've decided to change the thread to a dark grey, uh, you can just, just about see that here. Because I plan to tie dye this with black dye, um, white thread is going to show up really badly. I've got the correct tension now, you can't really see the thread through, which is good. So now I can start sewing this. So this is the colour of the thread that I've gone with. It's not a perfect match but I, I because I'm going to darken the fabric it should blend in better later. This is where the sleeve attaches so I want to mark that and I just do a little snip in the end there just so that I can use that to line up with the seam on the shoulder. <laughs> this is where I find out if I made the sleeves the right size for the armhole or not. So you line up the centre notch that I just made with the centre seam and then line up the outer edge where the side seam will be. If there is a very slight um, difference in the lengths, because it's a stretchy fabric you can sort of tease it to fit. But now this is lining up really well so I'm happy with that. That's the sleeve sewn on. It's starting to look more like a t-shirt, not that you can see anything from that angle. Now I just need to line up the side seams from the sleeve all the way down to the bottom, to the hem. To line up the seam on the sleeves. And the best way to get them to actually match up when you finish stitching is to separate the two overlock stitches, the seams. So I'm going to be stitching this way up. And I put the back one to the left and then I put the top one to the right, line them up and then when I go under the overlocker foot I don't have this in the way so I'm pegging all the way along to the bottom of the t-shirt. So I just need to do the other side and then stitch all the way along. So we haven't actually cut any fabric for the neck collar yet and that's because we need to take measurements first because I don't actually know how much fabric it needs to find out the size of neck band. Um, collar. There's this, the uh, shoulder seam there and then take a tape measure and walk it along this opening which is the neckline. So just walking it around the curve and that is exactly 14 inches. You take this measurement so just from there to there which is half the, the uh, neck circumference. So I'll take 14 inches Take that down to 12 inches, so I'm taking off 2 inches of the length, and then I'll double it to go all the way around. So it'll be 24 inches. Um, I need a strip that's 24 inches by this collar is 1 inch, stands up 1 inch from the collar times 2 because it's on the fold. So I'll make a strip of the same cotton jersey that is 2 inches deep by 24 inches long and then that will be my collar. So the next step is to stitch the two ends of the collar together and overlock down this piece so that I've got my circumference. So it's overlocked this edge um, so I've got a nice loop now and to attach it to the t-shirt it's easiest to Mark the centre, so I'm just going to put a little tiny notch. You also want to mark the halfway point on either side. So lining up the overlocking with the notches I've just made. And then I've got these two loops down here, which I also need to mark. You do the same to the neckline on the t-shirt. Line up the shoulder seams, and that will give you the front centre and the back centre. Line up the centre notches and then that will give you the centre of the sides because the shoulder seam is not actually in the centre. I'm going to fold it in half 
because that will give you the nice rolled hem of the collar. Uh, I need to actually turn the t-shirt right sides out now. And this is the right side of the fabric, so this is the outside. Taking the seam on the collar and laying that on top of the laying that on top of the back notch with the raw edges together. So it's folded back onto the t-shirt. <laughs> if you've managed to follow this far actually making something, bravo. I commend you. Right, um careful not to twist the fabric. You then want to line up the rest of the notches. I hope you've been entertained by this video. <laughs> I have no idea if anyone is still watching. Once you've pinned the notches together, you'll notice that the collar is shorter than the t-shirt, which is good because we want the collar to bring that fabric in and give it some strength and not just be really saggy. <laughs> As the jerseys, you just stretch the collar um, as you're feeding it through the machine, you just want to keep pulling each bit to flatten it. You don't want to overstretch it because you will add a curve to it, but you just want to stretch the collar out to match the t-shirt. And just do the same thing all the way around. All the pegs that I've got in here. Um, and I'm going to show you how I overlock this together. And I start just past where I have that overlock stitching on the collar. So as I'm pulling it through, I'll very gently pull the collar fabric so that it's flat against the t-shirt fabric, which is underneath. That's my neckline. I actually think it might be perfect. That's what the outside looks like. See, it's stitched like this. And then it'll sit like this. Now I need to fold up the sleeves and the hem and then cover stitch it. Uh, unfortunately I need to change the thread in my cover stitch machine. <laughs> One of the things that I hate having to do is changing these threads so I have got another set of grey. I'll probably put that on, on this one so that I don't have to unthread that one at the same time. I did a practice run of the cover stitch just to check where I wanted the stitch to go. So you can see where the edge of the turnover is there. And I managed to get the cover stitch to line perfectly up with the edge there. It looks great. And then this is the side you see on the outside. This is a pretty specialist machine that not a lot of people are going to have. So you can finish off um, a jersey cuff with a zigzag. There's quite a few different stitches you can do. I'm not an expert. But there are things you can do on the sewing machine which can finish this off rather than using a cover stitch. Using this is you have to stitch blind. So the turnover is on this side, but that's the side that has the zigzag stitch. And this is the side that has the two lines of stitching. So you have to have this side up. So you have to go by feel to make sure that you're stitching in the right place and also making sure that your seam is the same all the way along. So you can also follow the edge as a guide. A line here, and that is basically the edge of this needle here. So that is the lower thread, and then this is the upper stitch line thread. So I'm lining up what I can feel of the fabric there with this line here. Um, and then I can also use this edge here to make sure I get a nice straight line going around. I'm keeping my finger on the edge of what I can feel of the fold to try and keep it as lined up as possible. I just did the other sleeve and it's almost perfect. That's what the inside looks like. Decide how high you want the, the hem to be. So yeah, about there probably. So there. Um, so I'm going to put my fingernail on the fold, so that's on the fold there, and take some scissors. I'm just going to snip through that piece of overlocking there. Obviously, not going all the way through. The side of the overlocking is going that way. This side is going to go the opposite direction. So when you lay them down, they're lying side by side rather than 
doubled up. So got one one piece of overlocking going that way and the other piece going that way. So it's a lot thinner now. <laughs> As my hem, there is some slight overhang on some areas. <laughs> some areas I did line it up nicely, but I can trim it off if I am bothered by it, but it's never going to be seen anyway. I was hoping it's an actual off the shoulder and not just a really wide neck. <laughs> oh, it's great! Yeah, this is, I mean, I can't see it properly, I'm just looking at a tiny screen, but that is what I wanted. I didn't want a massive gaping neck, I just wanted that, that much off. So, that's my t-shirt. <laughs> I need to have a look myself properly, I can't really see, but yeah, that's what I wanted my t-shirt to do. Oh, it worked! I just need to tie-dye it now. Cool. I'm happy with that worked <laughs> and if I just wear it normally normal neck not too wide if I just wanted to wear it like this or like this <laughs> I'm so pleased I really didn't know if it was gonna work so I'm pretty happy with that I'm going to start the tie dyeing process now so I've got my t-shirt I guess I just want to crumple it, crumple it up, just crumple it like this. Looks nice and crinkled. I've got to fill this up with some more water and this needs to be soaked before adding the dye so I'll do that now. To dissolve salt into the water as well. So I've got, uh, I've got Dylon black fabric dye. Fingers crossed this turns out looking nice. So I meant to stir this for 15 minutes and then over the course of another 45 minutes stirring regularly but not constantly. I don't find that you really need to <laughs> to be honest. The dye takes pretty quickly. I then need to rinse it with cold water until the dye stops coming out and then I'll put it through a normal warm uh, 30 degree rinse and spin cycle in the washing machine. So we have the uh, orange, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, on the camera there's Orange. Let's come out of the dye packet. Like it's quite a lot of grey still. stage where I want to screen print it but I don't know if I actually want to screen print it because you have to stay in the comments whether you like it at this stage. Some of you might have preferred it before I tie dyed it as well so yeah let me know in the comments did you like it um, pre tie dye when it was just grey like it is now. Maybe I'll leave it like this and then see what everybody says in the comments whether you want to see me tie uh, whether you want to see me screen print or not ink I was going to use, so just white. And that's my screen. So what do you think? Should I screen print that picture from the front? I'll leave it as it is. And I'm going to put this, so this is the side seam, the left side seam. I'm going to stitch that on there about two inches from the left side seam. And all I'm going to do is stitch along this top edge which will be in line with the cover stitch. Okay. So that's 
the front side with the white stitching and on the back side with the black stitching. <laughs> this is my first first piece of clothing with my care label inside. That's so cool. Look at this. And this. <laughs> Oh, so cool. So yes, I will be having my own clothing, handmade by me, for sale soon. I'm going to be making jerseys, t-shirts, um, sweatshirts. Uh, I've already got makeup bags and I will be doing wash bags as well, so they'll have a, a more waterproof inner liner than the makeup bags. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. I've got so many interests and not enough time to do it all, unfortunately. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Um, whether you think the t-shirt looked better grey, or if you'd like to see it screen printed. I mean, I can easily just make another one and then tie dye it again. So, if it does look horrible, I can just make another one. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I'll see you in the next one. Why did that suddenly drop? That's weird, the colour of brightness on the monitor just suddenly went really dark after a piece of bubble wrap fell down. Weird. <laughs>